Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. This is the long-term weekly chart of silver. Um, I've drawn in the MACD here. You can see we're still below that zero line. We've been below that zero line for a long time, pretty much since the top was put in. Now, this arrow that I've drawn in here, this was the last hope, I will say, for what we're going to talk about tonight is the silver stash. And the idea of uh, there being a silver stash, it's, there, there's a lot of talk about a gold stash and all that stuff is rumors with World War II um, and the Philippines and Indonesia and stuff like that and Yamamoto's gold and all that stuff. Um, but recently people have brought up the idea of whether that could be the case with silver. Is there a silver stash? Now, I'm going to say absolutely no way that there is, uh, with one exception, that I think I found the stash. But we're going to go and explore this idea, then we're going to look at some picks for what we want to think about stacking in the, in the months going forward. So the first thing I want to take you to on this issue of this silver stash is actually a... Um, article that was published many many years ago you can see here this is actually from september 1923 and this is a federal reserve bulletin so that's kind of interesting on its face that the federal reserve actually talked about silver reserves back in 1923 so you can see here it says Silver purchased under the Pittman Act. The amount of silver used in manufacturers and the arts is fairly constant, the greatest increase being 27 million ounces in 1917 to 36 million ounces in 1918. That's very interesting. So keep those figures in mind. We're going to look at the Silver Institute information. And, you know, this is the one I always come back to. But just to give you a snapshot of what we're talking about here, this line item in demand is industrial fabrication. So you can see um, about 600 million ounces. Compare that to around 30 back when this was written. Uh, so back when the central banks had silver reserves, the manufacturing component of it was 5% of what it is today. That's a big factor. That has to do with the Silver Users Association and the Charles Savoy conspiracy theories. We're not going to go down that rabbit hole here, but uh, that's what it's connected to. So let's keep going. A table showing the amount of silver used for coinage and in the arts during the more recent years, as shown below, United States silver imports and exports of silver by principal countries from 1919 to 1922 for the first seven months, etc. The great excess of silver exports over imports in 1990 reflects heavy shipments to India, which comprised more than two-thirds of the total amount and were made under the terms of the Pittman Act. In 1920, the volume of excess exports had dropped to about one-sixth. Silver reserves and silver in circulation. Below is given a table showing the silver reserves of selected countries on December 31st, 1913. Hmm. What was December 31st, 1913? Was that when they passed the Federal Reserve Act? I think so. Just before the war on December 31st, 1918, just after the armistice at the close of 1920, when the price of silver was at its peak, and on the latest available data in 1923. So here's your chart. and Let's bring this in close here. Silver reserves held by central banks and government treasuries of selected countries. And here it is in unit of currency, par value, and then latest available data. You can see that India comes in number one with Spain number two. Is that interesting? Remember that Spain was the empire that uh, was involved in looting all of the gold and silver from the Central and South American nations all the way up until 1923. 
here they are it's second united states comes in third france italy switzerland portugal java belgium sweden netherlands denmark so here's your silver reserves yes there were silver reserves that central banks held the supply of silver as metallic reserve in the countries listed has on the whole increased during the last 10 years the greatest gain is shown by india which increased the amount of its silver reserve more than fivefold. Kind of interesting because that's something like we're seeing again today with India starting to buy lots and lots of silver. A gain of similar proportion is noted for Sweden and for Switzerland, although the latter countries show a decline since 1920. Portugal and Java have about doubled their holdings. Belgium and the Netherlands show slight increases. Spain and Italy hold their silver reserves somewhat below the pre-war figure, while France has reduced her pre-war holdings about one half. The Bank of England holds no silver reserve against its notes. Although legally one-fifth of its metallic reserve may be in silver, this privilege, however, is unlikely to be used because it has become a fixed tradition with the Bank of England to have its notes, with the exception of a certain amount of fiduciary currency, wholly secured by gold. So who was it that forced the demonetization of silver and putting the world on uh, world banks strictly, uh, I'm sorry, world central banks strictly on a gold standard? That would be the Bank of England right there. Silver, however, is reported to the amount of 7 million pounds as cover for currency notes issued by the Treasury. In many countries, as mentioned above, silver has entirely disappeared from circulation. There's Gresham's Law. Canada, however, reports a gradual increase, etc. So, fascinating. From September 1923. So, back then, the central banks actually had silver reserves. Uh, now, one would ask, do the central banks have silver reserves today? I don't think so. Uh, they certainly don't report any. Now, the question is, is there a giant silver stash hiding out there somewhere? Well, look at the industrial fabrication here. It's at 600 million. Now, the growing factor that we've watched here is coins and bars. You can see, starting in 2005, we went from 51 million. Um, million ounces a year all the way up to 250 that was in 2013 and we don't know where we're going to come in but roughly above 200 so a fourfold increase now is that a stash no i don't think so that's silver eagles and silver maples and perth mint stuff that's not a stash that's distributed amongst tiny investors so the big question is, where is the stash? Well, I'm going to show you. I've actually discovered the silver stash. Uh, it was hiding in plain sight all along. But the biggest silver stash in the world that I've located is right here. Yep, <laughs> it's in the landfills. Uh, and the reason why is because of the price. Like I showed you on this chart, this spike right here when we were moving up towards the $50 price this was the only real hope there was to get a silver stash and if we would have gotten a follow through on this move which as gold did broke out if you remember the high for gold was $850 in 1979 and gold ran to $1900 so basically a perfect double. If we would have had the same thing in silver uh, without this smackdown, of course, this smackdown in silver presaged the smackdown in gold. If silver would have run to where it should have, to $100, which is what I was predicting, and then it would have con continued up from there, there would have been recycling in silver. But because there wasn't because they suppressed the price because central bankers and criminal bullion banks and criminal bankers decided that it was more important to suppress the price of silver and protect their worthless fiat currencies than to actually preserve the world's silver. The silver stash remains right here in the landfills. That's where it is. There is no silver stash except in these landfills. 
and it's going to take a good $250 price uh, in my opinion and probably $500 to get that sort of situation to turn around. Now I wanted to look at recent buys here. Now this uh, monkey, this lunar monkey is one I'm keeping my eye on very closely and the thing I keep my eye on is the one ounce versus the half ounce price. Now this is the lowest that we've seen for the one ounce and this is on uh, JM Bullion at 2462 now you have to buy 300 plus but they do have that they have um, let's see uh, they have 1633 so you can get 300 of those you have to do it by bank wire but you can get it for 2462 now on the other hand we have the half ounce uh, monkey over at Gainesville coins and you can get that one for 1206 so I'm going to have to say that I still like the half ounce monkey more than the one ounce. For me, the turning point is going to be when the one ounce actually crosses below. Right now, for the half ounce, we're at $24.12 an ounce on the half ounce, and the one ounce, the best you can get is $24.62. So, for me, I'm not even going to consider the one ounce until it crosses below the half ounce because the appreciation that we've seen on the half ounce has been better than anything we've seen on the one ounce. Now, I will be willing to revise this uh, view when they cross, if they cross. Definitely, the, this, this monkey is the first year we've seen them come down. With the goats, which now... Uh, Atmax is asking $23 for the half ounce goats and we were picking those up for 12 so I'm still gonna stick with this half ounce monkey I think this is going to be the best deal going forward this is definitely what I'm going to be stacking uh, for the next uh, period of time regardless of what silver does this coin around $12 for me is an absolute steal and one of the reasons for that, of course, is the compare silver prices. Now, the best you've got here on junk is still a 28% premium. If you listen to the interviews, uh, the recent silver doctors, the doc has talked about how the uh, supply tight uh, tightness is kind of easing up. And the as the price of silver rises, uh, the premium percentage is coming down. That makes sense, but still at uh, 28% being the best buy you can have there, we're talking $14, uh, I'm sorry, $1,481 for that 100. So you're talking about 1481 divided by the 71.5, and that's going to yield us a price almost $21 an ounce for junk silver. So if we're talking about $21 an ounce for junk silver, and uh, I can pick up these one ounce monkeys for $24.62, or the half ounce, even better, for $24, I'm definitely gonna go with that. Uh, and right now, until the one ounce crosses below the half ounce, I'm definitely gonna prefer uh, the half ounce and that's just simply because as I pointed out before with the uh, new series the bullion series um, coming out in silver from the Perth Mint these are in these um, uh, 20 coin or 25 coin rolls they jangle together whereas when you're talking about a half ounce coin you're getting twice the number of coins than you're getting with the one ounce coin and it's a cheaper price each one of those coins is in its own plastic sealed container. Um, I'm not sure where I'm going to draw the line, but definitely if uh, the one ounce doesn't cross below the, the half ounce, I'm not going to even consider it. So the half ounce is the pick. So let's get back and review the main story here. There was a time when there was a chance to get some kind of stockpile in silver. That, that time has passed. And the central bankers and the bullion banks and the criminal banks all decided that they would rather 
suppress the price of silver than actually create a available above ground stockpile of silver. And that happened when they suppressed the price. There's no getting around that. I don't think there's any gigantic hidden stockpile of silver out there, except right there, it's sitting in the landfills. And we'll talk to you next time.